Hi there, in this video we're going to look at the question of is there a general algorithm for answering all mathematical questions if you like a master algorithm. Now again I've written this out already to make it a little bit quicker so let's imagine that we have a, an algorithm written down in the format we've seen in the previous video so let's say um, these are our instructions here, separated by our commas. Okay, so we might have um, 0, 0R, 0, 10R, 0, 01R, exactly as we have here, and we get into the stop position. Again, um, there's no data here, this is representing the algorithm only. Okay, so we could represent this algorithm using that form of contraction. Uh, if, we, if we let 0, 0 be defined, defined as 0 and it would be a, a, a 0, 1, 0 would be defined as 1 and a 0, 1, 1 would say define R and a, a 0, 1, 1, 1 0 would define an L and this one here a 0 at the beginning there 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros, 4 ones and a 0 would define stop. So we could rewrite this here and just take out the commas and we'll just put them all together in one line. So we just have 0,0R zero, zero, and then the 1,0R. Zero, How if I put them all together here? So we could then take this and we could form our contraction. So 0 would be 0,0, zero, zero and the other 0 would be given by the 0,0, zero, zero and the R would be given by the 0, 1, 1, 0, so that's 0, 1, 1, 0, which is the R, and again the other one would be given by 0, 1, 0, and we continue along, all the way along, till we get to the stop, and the stop would be given by our 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, okay? Now the reason for <coughs> showing this is that this is one particular set of instructions okay and the instructions are being have to be um, they have to be in that particular order so if the instructions come in in that particular order we could take that number there which is uh, a binary number and we could create a uh, the decimal number from it so for example that might be um, number it's not actually this number but I'll just made a number up but it might be number say four seven five one three two six four so we could say that that there is algorithm number four seven one five three two six four now we could have a different set of instructions and we would have a different algorithm okay so we've got an infinite number of possible instructions that we can set out so we could will have an infinite number of possible algorithms okay so if we call each of the algorithms T for Turing, okay, so we have, we could have uh, algorithm T0, T1, T2, T3, all the way up to T infinity, okay, so what we would have then, we could replace the, this number here, the infinity, with uh, N, okay, so this algorithm would be the nth algorithm, and it would be acting on an input, and if we call M the input, okay, because there'd be an infinite number of inputs as well, okay, so we're really saying the nth, um, we call it a Turing machine, if we want, okay, the algorithm is a Turing machine, so the nth Turing machine acting on M inputs, okay, now, when we um, look we can actually um, look at the, a universal machine, okay? So this universal machine will be able to mimic all of these individual Turing machines, okay? Really, we could re -say that. We could say that we can create a machine that will run all algorithms that we can possibly think of, and we can call this machine a universal Turing machine. Okay, so 
this would be a, a universal Turing machine okay and it would mimic the nth algorithm uh, given the mth input okay so an individual one of these um, algorithms could be written in the form of TNM okay so just to be clear as well um, this here this TNM is the totality of all the um, instructions for example this instruction here might be repeated uh, three four five or maybe a hundred times okay and that would give this unique number here okay so that would give us our Turing machine n act, acting on m but this universal Turing machine is a unique if the machine um, is defined by uh, unique inputs okay so if this input if this instruction sorry if this instruction was to appear a hundred times okay and here it would only appear once in here okay right. so this machine here only has a defined number of instructions okay but in this end here uh, these instructions could be repeated an infinite number of times okay so the universal Turing machine it mimics all other Turing machines okay so we can write universal Turing machine uh, nm equals tnm and when we have run through the algorithm okay the nth algorithm uh, acting on the nth input we'll get a final answer out which we could just call p <coughs> but this universal turing machine this is actually uh, an algorithm as well so it actually has associated with it a Turing number so we could actually write the universal Turing machine we could call it TU okay now given this we still got our set question that we um, were asked at the beginning is there an algorithm for answering all mathematical problems okay now another way to put that would be to say that can we come up with an algorithm okay call it a Turing machine Turing machine number M that acts on M inputs okay such that the the algorithm um, either doesn't stop okay uh, as it, it gets stuck in an endless loop and just keeps entire keeps looping okay or the other one is that it actually stops okay so now what we can say is if we assume that there is a, a Turing machine exists that will tell us whether this machine will actually stop or not okay then we can call this say the um, halting Turing machine so we could call that H NM okay so that's the halting machine that looks at the nth algorithm with the nth input and it gives us a zero if this algorithm doesn't stop and it gives us a one if the algorithm does stop okay so now we could write this out in this format here and we could say well let n be all of the possible machines okay all of the possible algorithms let m be all the possible inputs then we can create this matrix of the outputs okay so that's all the algorithms all the inputs and that's all of the outputs so let a square represent a, a non-stopping machine okay a non-stopping algorithm so that square is non-stopping non-stopping these are output so that's the final output p which would be one or two that's non-stopping that's an output uh, blah, blah 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 all the way down here now that will continue on for infinity and it'll continue on infinity that way now we could rewrite this out and we could say well 
let's do the halting algorithm first. Now after doing the halting algorithm, we'll do the halting algorithm on the the Turing machine TNM. Okay, so we're working the whole we're actually doing this first and then that second, okay? So if we were to do that, we could give this new machine uh, a new name, we could call it the Qth machine on NM, and all this would do in effect would be we could say, well, this machine here will just replace all the squares with, say, zeros, okay? And we can keep all of the other outputs exactly the same, okay? So all that's really done is replace the squares with zeros, okay? So this little line here replaces the squares with zeros, okay? Now, we know the that, of course, that goes on forever, and it goes on for ever uh, down the way as well. Okay, the, the machines go, the algorithms go on forever as well. Okay, so if we were to look at the diagonal numbers here, okay, so we put a little box round about the diagonals. The diagonals are the outputs are 0, 2, 1, 0, and 5. So let's rewrite this on the next page. So Again, I've already done that for us to save a bit of time. <coughs> so, I've rewritten that again, same as previously. Now, what we're going to do is called a dedicated slash, which is a really powerful, famous way of uh, proving uh, things by contradiction. So, if we took all of the diagonals values here, so 0, 2, 0, 0, 5, okay, so 0, 2, 0, 0, 5, and we were to add 1 on to every diagonal value, so the 0 becomes 1, 2 becomes 3, 0 becomes 1, etc., then what we would have created is we would have created a new value Q, n comma n now that is now an, an n because we're only looking at the diagonal values and in the diagonal values n is equal to m and that defines the diagonal values of course you could call it you could have said you could have called it m as well uh, m m or n n either way would work so we've called it one plus q n n so that 1 plus QNN is written as 1 plus, again, we do the HNN first, which is a halting test, and we do it on the TNN, okay? So now, the table here contains every conceivable algorithm, every conceivable input, and it gives us all of the outputs for those algorithms and inputs. So that must mean that this new algorithm, which we've just created, 1 plus QNN, must exist in some row here. Okay, it will be algorithm number uh, 375,274,000,000, blah, 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 blah. So somewhere down here, there will be a row Okay, and that row will represent the outputs of this algorithm. Okay, now the problem is that, and this is the reason for doing the dedicated cut, is that no such row can ever exist because the diagonal here on that row will some point along there that he'll hit the diagonal and the diagonal will be out by one okay now that's quite a neat and acute um way of of, of pr proving something by contradiction so we have a contradiction and the contradiction tells us by the method of dedicated slash that this halting algorithm hnm does not exist so in effect what we're saying is we can't tell whether 
an algorithm is actually going to halt or not okay so we can actually create a master algorithm okay so there is no general algorithm for deciding mathematical questions okay now that's all there is about the maths of algorithms um, and I just added it in because I thought it might be uh, interesting uh, as an interesting start okay right thank you bye bye